Hello, this is Running Robert, and today we're going to talk about the Lipsyn Incorporated LPCN LPCN 1154 results. Today is the 1st of July, 2024. The results came out last week. Took me a bit to get there, but we are here now. So in this summary, we're going to be looking at the bullish and the bearish parts of the results. Go through them, get a timeline, see where we're going for it. So I generally follow small cap pharma. I do some games. I do a little bit of everything. So if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. And thank you. Uh, at the moment, I do not own any stocks or options. I wish I had bought back in January, but yeah, can't help it now. I'm an amateur investor and any advice given should be followed by no due diligence. And any information given is valid for today, the 1st of July. And the slideshow will not be updated. But again, new news, new slideshows. Cool. So... Good news right off the bat. So obviously uh, Lipsyn announced that it met its bioequivalency with the current IV drug in the market. That was awesome. And literally, what does that mean? So LPCN1154 is an oral form formulation of that IV drug. So one, it has a much better safety pro profile than the drug. Of course, because it's an IV. Since it's an oral medication, it's much better than that two and a half days they need for the IV infusion. So what you're looking at is a drug that works quicker, is easier to take, has less side effects, and works about the same. So of course, overall, it's superior or equal in almost every way to the IV drug at the moment. So should have no problem overtaking it, right? But then you're asking yourself, why is the stock acting funny? It peaked into the 10 and then they got the news and it went way down. Okay, so really what we're looking at here is, one, we've seen a huge run-up this year from it. Like I said, it started this year in the twos, got up to 10. As we got closer to the event, a lot of people were like, this is going to succeed. I want to hop on. This made it become a sell the news event. So when the news came out, everyone was like, that's the news I wanted, sold. So if you had it too, and then you could sell it for nine, you were like, hey, I'm good. This is exactly what I wanted. Plenty of profit. We're loving it. So... The second part is the company's still fairly far away from being on the market with money going into 2026. We're going to talk about that timeline now coming up. So the company stated it's going to file its NDA, which is this new drug application by the end of quarter four, 2024. The FDA will take a month to accept and then put a 10 month PDUFA on it. Now, based on the results, the FDA could do it earlier. And I bring up the priority review up here too, because what we're looking at is you got priority review, six months, treats a serious condition, which PPD is, postpartum depression, and provides significant improvement in safety or effectiveness. Obviously, we're providing a, a huge improvement in safety. Is that enough? Like, is, is PPD a, seri a serious enough condition in the FDA eyes? And does this actually have enough information behind it that it they consider it more safe? So for the moment, I'm going to say it's a 10-month. I'll be... I won't, it won't be unexpected if they say six. It'll be a happy surprise, but for looking at it this way, we're just going to take the 10 month at the moment. So assuming that means we file in December in 2024, in January 2025 it is accepted with most the most likely proof of date being in October 2025. Based on company launches and everything most and, and everything else, most likely the drug won't go on sale until 2026. If they get approval at the end of 20, in October, you're going to November, December. That is a lot of holidays. It is just a terrible time to launch a drug. And that's just, you know, most companies won't do it unless there's something, some real reason that they're trying to push it through. Lipazine does not act fast in a lot of things. So I believe that we're going to probably see it in the first quarter of 2026. All right, so I've said a lot. And this is pretty much just everything and anything else that is coming to mind. So... So one, unless there's a major change, the company will most likely need money before 2026. And I say that because the NDA is going to cost some money to do. You have to get consultants, extra staff, stuff like that for just the application process. That's just for the NDA. That's not counting that you're also going to have to staff up for your sales force, get them training, get a lot of that stuff, uh, have the drugs produced for your launch supply. So right now, the money at the current rate would get into 2026, but again, we have a lot more expenses coming in. And Talando, I'm not sure if it can, if it sells well, I think they might be in good shape, but 
I don't see a huge amount of revenue for it at the moment. So that's kind of why we're thinking there will be some kind of offering before 2026. Uh, of course, PPD markets are on 100 to 300 per year. If you go online and you look at it, you will see some just wildly numbers like, oh, 5 billion, 6 billion, whatever. Let's go with this. Bygen's first quarter sales were around 12 million. So that indicates a market, a fairly decent market, because that, you know, they're still relatively early in this launch, but not billions. And that's it's okay. Now, the Bygen Sage Defense, obviously, their drug is going to be the most impacted. It is newly approved. They've spent a lot of money getting it to market. What kind of defense are they going to play for that? And we do see that with large pharma companies. They will try to bring out a lot of tricks into the book to, hey, keep what they're doing. It's just a sad truth. It makes sense because they're trying to run a business and they can't say, oh, well, we spent all this money on this drug, but eh, we're just going to give up and go die in the corner. Doesn't happen. So what kind of defense are they going to bring in there? Is it going to be strong or is, you know, if the sales stay around 12, 15, 20 million, are they just going to say, you know what, it's just not worth it. And then just kind of exit that market. Uh, Libzine will, will not need a large marketing or sales group. So obviously they will be talking primarily to OBs and they're going to target larger hospitals with more births. So I expect them to be more in like New York City, Boston, D.C., Raleigh, Charlotte, Miami, Chicago, stuff like that. Like, I don't think they're going to be targeting like middle of nowhere, North Dakota. Not being offensive, just not a lot of births there, not a lot of reasons to target that you're going to be hitting these larger hospitals first before going out into the area. So again, I think that's going to make it that is it easier to get a smaller sales force in there because you have less doctors to talk to. Whew, so we've done a lot here. So summary, okay, obviously still very positive news. I, I believe the company should not have a hard time selling it. And I think they're going to be able to bring in strong, stable revenue once it gets to market, once they get their groove on. So that's pretty simple. I think what's going to happen is the waiting game is really what's going to hurt the stock. Again, maybe we get it in a year's time, but I'm still feeling like 2026 is when we're going to actually see the drug come to market. And we are still in mid-2024. Most likely, my plan is I'm going to wait on the stock offering before buying the stock. Uh, like I said, I still believe that they will need cash at some point, and I will jump on that opportunity when they offer a stock and the price goes down uh, to buy some. So hopefully this gave you some good information, helped you get some, uh, helped you get a little more knowledge. That's what I'm trying to do here. But thank you very much for watching and listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.